Mark Mylord, famous for directing some of the best episodes in Game of Thrones and Succession, directed one of the most unusual yet familiar films of 2022. The film has just been released on HBO Max and after witnessing it, I cannot help but talk about it with every film lover I know. The horror slash dark comedy treatment of the age-old revenge drama plot surpasses our expectations in terms of performance and writing. The premise of the film is not unconventional. The celebrity chef Sloeg invites some of the most famous and wealthy food enthusiasts from all over the world to a secluded island where he runs one of the most delicate and precise restaurants in the world. And what happens upon reaching there is a scary and enjoyable ride at the same time. The underlying narrative of the story shares some similar bits with Parasite and the discreet charm of the bourgeoisie as all three of these films present a comedic and caricaturist representation of the upper class. We will talk about the film and the ending but before that we will discuss the film's basic plot so that you can get a better idea of the story. A huge spoiler warning is in order as we will discuss some important plot points and character details from the film so if you are still planning to catch the movie, kindly watch it first and then come back to this video. And those who have been equally captivated by the film as me, kindly follow us through the video. Tyler and Margot, a young couple being invited to the private fine dining restaurant, wait and appear for a private boat that is expected shortly and would transport them to a secluded private island called Hawthorne for an exceptional gourmet experience. The restaurant charges an outrageous amount of money for this experience, including the benefit of this boat excursion and tips. When Margot first hears this in person, she is immediately scared but her partner is certain that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. The other guests, three young tech investors named Soren, Bryce and Dave, an elderly businessman named Richard and his wife Anne, a former movie actor named George who is definitely past his prime and his assistant come girlfriend Felicity and a renowned food critic named Lillian Bloom along with the editor of the magazine she writes for named Ted all showed up shortly after them. Margot begins to understand that her partner Tyler is completely devoted to the famous chef Julian Sloy, who is in charge of the restaurant. Soon after reaching the island, it is also made clear that she was not originally invited and had just substituted for another woman who was meant to travel with Tyler. Margot is repeatedly informed that she is not supposed to go through this rare experience. She and the other guests, after getting a tour of the island and learning about the ingredients of the food that are handpicked by the chef from Elsa, come to the restaurant to enjoy the fine dining experience. But what begins to unfold after that is beyond their comprehension. As the dinner starts, we see the chef coming inside the restaurant and like a performer, he starts to introduce his food to the customers. Throughout his introduction, Sloe keeps a closer eye on Margot and she constantly feels unwelcomed on the island. The extravagant courses then start to come out of the kitchen like the literal taste of the ocean and it gets weirder and weirder as the food keeps on coming. We see a breadless bread dish because it is considered to be the food of the poor. Then we see tortillas with everyone since imprinted on them. Like Richard's infidelity with Margot, Tyler taking snaps of his food, the tech team's inconsistent balance sheets, pictures of the restaurants that were closed due to Lillian's bad reviews and so on and so forth. Then in the third course, we get to see a massive bang as the shoe chef of Sloic shoots himself to death for the dish called the mess. Then we learn that the death of everyone present in the restaurant is actually going to be this magnum opus menu by Sloic. After that, we get to know why these 12 guests in particular were invited to create the menu. All of these vile and rich people contributed something that resulted in the death of Sloic's passion for his craft. Like Tyler, a fanboy who likes to dismantle everything to its minute components and ruin the mystery surrounding the creation. The older couple Richard and Anne were regulars at the restaurant but when asked they could not even name a single dish that they like while eating at Hawthorne. The tech group is an arrogant bunch of people who think too much of themselves and misbehave with the service industry workers. The food critic and the editor were responsible for the closure of multiple restaurants resulting in the deaths of several passionate dreams. And he invited the washed up movie star who gave away his craft for money and fame and starred in a god awful movie that ruined one hard earned holiday of Sloy. Then he orders to cut a finger off Richard and gets stabbed himself in order to present the next food item. The food is called Man's Folly and he serves it only to the women dining at his restaurant. The men are given a chance to flee, but all of them get caught and his fanboy Tyler is asked to cook a dish. As he serves really bullshit food according to the renowned chef, the fanboy kills himself after disappointing his idol. However, Margot is the only one who is not supposed to be there and stands out among them. 
Sloic quickly notices this as she does not fit into the rich archetype and concludes that she's an escort and a fellow quote unquote giver as both of them work in the service industry. Tyler has broken up with his girlfriend and booked her services to accompany him to the dinner. He knew that the menu would consist of the death of him and his partner beforehand, still as a fanboy he dragged Margot down to die with him. Thus Loic builds up a certain fondness for her and offers her to die standing by the restaurant staff. He tasks her with retrieving a barrel from his quarters but upon reaching there she is attacked by Elsa whom she manages to take care of. She also gets a glimpse at the chef's entire life through photographs and in only one of them he looks genuinely happy about his achievements as his younger self won an award for making the best burger while working as a staff member in a meat joint. She returns to the chef and asks him to take back her food as it does not feel appetizing to her because the food was not made out of love but out of an obsession with perfection. The main ingredient of this menu is nothing but intellectual bullshit and she asks for a cheeseburger instead. With a glint shining in his eye, Sloic starts to prepare the food and with immense love and care, he delivers a delicious cheeseburger to her but after taking two bites, Margot cleverly asks to pack the food so that she can enjoy it after returning home. Sloic agrees to let her go but serves a dessert for the rest of the customers. He serves them s'mores fittingly as this is the most in your face food that is considered to be an abomination. He lights the restaurant up and dies along with his staff and customers in an explosion. Margot takes a boat to run away from this literal hell's kitchen and keeps on eating the cheeseburger while watching Hawthorne burn. She is seen to be cleaning her mouth with a fancy tissue consisting of the menu that Sloic carefully put inside her food container. At the core of it, this is a story of an artist whose love for his art has vanished as he pushed himself so far to please others that only his obsession with his craft remains at the end. At this point in time, the simplest and most normal form of challenge excited him and brought out the long lost love and care for his skills and craft. The film tells us that perfection is unattainable so we should engage ourselves in the things that excite us the most rather than invest time in things that only other people can enjoy. The film educates us not to indulge too much in breaking down an art piece rather than enjoying the ride and emotions that we feel while sensing it. And it also conveys the important message that while following your passion, you need to keep challenging yourself but not so much that you forget what the core reason is for loving and pursuing it in the first place. Art is sacred, art is personal and as the maestro Scorsese said, simple is hard. The film is a complete home run as it successfully delivers an age-old revenge drama plot and manages to serve it with witty comedy coating that lingers on the back of our film-consuming tongue for a long time. The performances of Anya Taylor, Joy Nicholas Holt and Judith Light are exquisite with beautiful support given by all the other co-actors. Above all, Ralph Fiennes steals every frame of the film that he appears in with his enchanting performance and literal acting chops. The cinematography of Peter Deeming tells a story of its own as it emphasizes the shadows on the island, foreshadowing the dark outcome at the end. Other technical departments too do their jobs perfectly and create an engaging and chilling setup that hooks us to the screen. The writers of the film took inspiration from various one-room dramas and this Christias setup creates an immersive experience into the literal hell's kitchen. We will be breaking down the details of the movie in a different video as the film is a lot to process. But for now all we can say is that this movie is a must watch and deserves your undivided attention. Hey 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 thank you for watching this video do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching the menu or what your favorite food is from the film. Mine is the man's folly. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off. Ayo it wasn't caught you donkey and I'll be back.